Hello everyone. So as I told you last time, there are two methods we're going to use to solve all the internal forces in a truss. One is called the method of joints, where we make a free body diagram at every single point where they come together and say, okay, well, if they're coming together like this. Well, then I have a free body diagram that looks something like this. And I can then solve for those forces. Method section is a little bit different. I take my guy and I say, okay, I want the forces right here, right here, right here. So I cut, I get rid of all this, and I replace it. If you're wondering like which one's easier, which one's harder, it will depend entirely on your situation. Entirely on your situation. Um, in a lot of simple trusses, the method of joints is easier, but as you get more and more complex, you might not care about every single internal force. And then the method of sections would be far, far easier. Okay, so how do we actually solve method joints? Well, first off, um, if we have forces being applied to our guy, we're going to break them into components. So instead of having a diagonal force, we'll break it into a horizontal and a vertical one. Then we're going to use that to calculate our external reactions. So that means we replace our pin support and our rolling support, wherever they are, with forces and we solve for those forces then we begin to go from each joint and solve what we can so we'll start at this joint and we say okay well can I solve for that force and that force if I can wonderful then I go to this joint and I try to solve and I just keep on going through until I've solved every single point and I have all the internal forces and you have to assume a force direction but I always say assume tension because compression is what we always consider negative um, and so if you got it wrong, it will just give you a negative number, and that's perfect. Now with each of these joints, we only get two equations, which are the sum of forces in the x and sum of forces in the y, or horizontal and vertical, depending on what you want to do. And you can then solve for any unknowns, but you only get two unknowns per joint. Now, for all of our systems, that should be enough. It just might mean you have to do a little bit of algebra walking through it. So try to find one where you only see two unknowns to be able to solve that right away. And finally, check all of your calculations to make sure that you have equilibrium, that with the forces you would put in, that it would all come out and stay stable. Finally, if you want to, you can summarize with a force diagram, which would be where I just say like, okay, this is, you know, 300 and that's in tension, that's 250 in compression, that's 300 in, in thousand and tension, you know, whatever. And it would show the joints, but with the forces right next to it. Now, I'm not gonna leave you here. We're gonna try out an example to help us really run through this. So this example 5.1 in your textbook, it's not a very difficult truss. It's only got one, two, three, four, five members. And we'll see what the forces in those members are. So let's read it out. A simply supported truss is shown on the right. There's a pin support at A, okay, pin, and a roller support at C. We want to determine the support reactions and the internal force in each member. We're gonna use method of joints. Now, these links are important because these are how we're gonna get our angles. You don't necessarily need angles, what you need is ratios a lot of times, and that will help you. You can figure out the slope from this, like slope of this line right here, is seven over six. Oh, no, wait, sorry. Did my math wrong. <laughs> that would be four over six. There you go. So that can help you. Just do the math and you can figure out what the slope of each of these lines are. And it can be a lot easier than having to calculate angles. Okay, so the first step is to draw a free body diagram. Now I do this for all my forces and all my reaction forces. I'm not even cutting or looking at the joints yet because I have to solve for these to begin with. So I didn't have any slope forces, so that was nice. Those just were already perfectly to the side and perfectly down. And I've got my pin support with its two components up and to the right, and my rolling support over here. Now I solve for those reaction forces. Um, as in most cases, I always tell you to take this on the moment first. We usually do that around a point which we know least about. So there's two unknowns here, so why not take the moment? Because then their distance is zero, and I don't have to worry about them anymore. 
and I'll have one, two, three components. So the first one is just going to be four times five. And it seems like I'm considering counterclockwise positive, so that would be negative because it turns in the clockwise direction. And then I have this one up here, which is a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to go up and around. And that's turning it in a counterclockwise direction, which makes it positive. That'll be two times six. And then finally, 12 times this one I don't know, which is also going to be positive because that is going in a counterclockwise direction. Now, if you look at this equation, there's only one unknown, so I should be able to solve for it. And it comes out that RCV, so the reaction force at C in the vertical direction, is 0.667 kips. Now, with that, there is only one unknown in the horizontal direction now, one unknown in the vertical direction, so I should be able to solve those fairly quickly. I can do that by taking this in the moments. I could also just do it by summing the forces in the y direction, which would probably have been simpler here. It'll get the same answer. Um, so looking at it slightly differently, I have four kips going down plus the 0.667 kips going up from point C and plus my reaction force A in the vertical direction. And so that's pretty easy to see that we would get the exact same number. So A in the vertical direction is equal to 3.33 kips. You're gonna see that I'm currently, I'm pretty biased towards some moments. I really like that. Um, and you'll get the exact same equation if you use, if you can use some of the moment three times if you want to. Um, and you'll most likely have the same equation pop out if you try to use it, um, do that. As if you just done some of the forces in the Y or some of the forces in the X. Now there's only one force in the horizontal direction and this force as well. So since they are in equal and opposite directions, they have to be equal to each other. Super simple equation, super simple algebra, and we get two kips. Now we're going to walk through and try to figure out how to solve one of these um, joints. So we'll pick a joint and we'll draw three by a diagram. So we'll do point C. Um, it's got two unknowns, which is a good thing because we only have two equations we can use to solve this. Now we got the slope of this just from geometry. And this one was perfectly horizontal. So if we wanted to, we could solve it by breaking the components, but since there's only three forces, we can also use a force triangle, which a lot of times in these cases would be simpler. So we set them all up so they're all connected together because they have to be, because they're in equilibrium. We know what this side is, and we have our force triangle right here, which if you solve for the hypotenuse, it would be 7.21. And so from that, we can figure out all of our components. So what we see is that 0.667 over six, we're doing a ratio here, so this side over that side, should be the same as this force over this side which is also the same as this force over 7.21. And so if I then solve that, what I get is that CD will be 0.445 kips and BC will be 0.802 kips. If you're wondering like the naming convention, usually it's just given as a letters or force with two letters and it says where the force started from, where it went to. So. Um, force CD would also be equal to force DC, or might just be negative, depending on how you decide to draw it. So you don't have to cut solve for both. You just solve for one internal force, and that's good enough. Now we're going to look at another joint. So we pick the top joint, and we have quite a bit going on here. Um, so we have, let's see, let me redraw it a little bit to make it more clear. And so we have forces going in right here, going out right here, and coming in right here. And luckily we already know what force BC is. We solved for that. We have a two kip load. And then we have force BD and force AB. So counter unknowns, we know this. So I'm talking about that, let's check. If we don't know this, we don't know that. That's two unknowns. And so we're gonna have to solve. 
So what they show right here is we're going to break this into a bunch of components. Then we're going to add all of our horizontal components, add all of our vertical components, and we're good to go. Now, I will, I'll say this for this example right here. This tip is really important. Um, you need to know when to draw the line when it comes to what, what is simplifying this problem. Like this is taken straight from your book. This is what they did. But in my opinion, all of these different arrows really clutters up your drawing. Um, if you want to break it into components, I would definitely draw separate triangles to the side. Um, as I've shown you in the past, it'll just make things simpler on you. Okay, so then we do our some of the forces in the vertical direction, some of the forces in the horizontal direction, and yes, there is algebra. We have to do some algebra here to solve. But once we've done it, we get it. And these little components right here, these fractions, they're taken exactly the same as they were earlier. Okay, now we keep on going with the process and we have yet another joint. And you're like, oh my goodness, how many joints are we gonna have? Well. So the last one we have, let's see here, one unknown at AD. We know what BD is, we know what CD is. And so with that, we have one unknown and it shouldn't be too terribly difficult to solve. And with that, we only have one equation we need, which is some forces in the horizontal direction and we can get AD. And so finally, we get to our last joint, but what you realize then at this point is we've already solved it. We know every single component at this point, so we don't have to do anything. A lot of times you won't need all the joints to solve everything. And for most problems, they don't ask you for all the internal forces. So you definitely will need to solve it. Okay, and then we have this right here as our answer. Now, and this is a much longer video than normal. I wanted to give this example along with the method because they need to go together. Um, but thank you for listening. I hope this helps you and I'll see you all next time. Just remember, you take it one step at a time, solve for those reaction forces and look at joints individually and make sure that they don't have more than two unknowns and then keep moving through until you solve everything. Thank you so much. See y'all soon. Bye-bye.